God bless you. My name is Evangelist Jarvis Maris, and I just want to reach out to you and, and just, you know, I, I pray that what the message I have today will really resonate and touch your heart, you know, because uh, a lot of times, you know, we, we are born somewhere, we we born into a family, we born into a region, we born into a neighborhood, and sometimes, you know, I remember I was born in the South Bronx, and, and, and all I hear, the, you know, the rap music and everything, you know, five gunshots, you know, this is that, that, and I always ponder, I said, well, you gotta be better neighborhoods outside of my neighborhood, you know? It's, just be this. The world can't just be wrapped around where I live, and uh, and I'm, I, I'm actually, you know, I, I want to talk to you about BC before Christ, and uh, I want to say I, I, I'm I'm a firstborn of a son of a devil worshipper, and for 25 years I practiced devil worshiping like never before. I was in the church of Satan, uh, demonic church, and uh, growing up being groomed by warlocks and witches uh, to be high-ranked devil worshiper. So because there is a dark side. Um, whether we believe it or not, things that happen around the world are uh, so, uh, you know, demonic and, and, and things. I was in that world for 25 years. I knew the kingdom of darkness. The devil became my daddy for 25 years. And I remember one day I was in the schoolyard and uh, there was a pastor preacher preaching. I was like seven years old and uh, he was touching people. And I felt like, man, I need this man to touch me because my father was a warlock. My father beat up my mom. My father was a drunk. He was an alcoholic. My grandfather was an alcoholic. And my father, all he knew was to worship the devil, worship demons in Santeria and in spiritualism. And uh, that's what we knew in my house. My father would turn the living room on fire and take me and my brothers and, and really uh, make them jump over the fire to purify us. And, and uh, I remember seeing demons in my house. And uh, my mom was so fragmented and broken from the beatings that my father would get, you know, hit her and beat her because my father didn't love himself. So uh, he would beat my mom and take it out of my mom's. And I remember there was year, there was many years that was Christmas and we didn't have a Christmas tree. But when we did have a Christmas tree, there was no there was no gifts underneath the tree. And I uh, mean, my brother would have to fabricate and make up stories that we had Christmas and we had gifts and we couldn't bring him outside. And uh, going back to the past, at seven years old, uh, he got off the stage and when he came over to pray for me, he passed me by. So I said, well, my, dad, my real dad don't love me. Uh, so I guess Jesus don't love me. So I went home broken that Jesus touched everybody in the schoolyard, in the playground, but he didn't want to touch me because he didn't love me. And I went home with that mindset that he didn't love me. And, uh, so my natural dad didn't love me. And this guy called Jesus, that he lives in heaven, didn't love me either. So I went home fragmented, broken, and I said to myself, well, you know. So at the age of years old, I was inducted into the, into the warlock. I was inducted into the witchcraft and uh, I made a pact with the devil and at the age of 33 my father got shot and got killed and uh, I became the high priest in the home and I, I went to witchcraft church I went uh, I, I got married Halloween I remember I got married I had a demonic wedding all warlocks and witches and uh, demon demons and principalities came to my wedding baptized my wedding blood rituals I sold my soul to the devil uh, I became one of the high-ranked devil worshippers in New York City from New York City to Haiti, from Haiti to Cuba, from Cuba to Miami, back to New York. And uh, I was uh, living uh, the life that I thought that, you know, I had power. I would ask to project and curse neighborhood. I would sit with the devil all night long and talk to him like a human being. He was right here. I'm there talking, taking orders and assignments, how to ask to project, curse neighborhood, drink animal blood, cut myself, drink my blood. Even today, if, if I can do this and show you the marks that I have here, that, that, that those are the satanic marks that were carved into my body. So I had to shed blood and write the contract to sell my soul to the devil. And uh, it just been, it was, a, it was a demonic journey. I saw my daughter into the dark side, saying, you know, what I don't finish, she will finish. And my only daughter, you know, I was very satanic, very demonic. I put witchcraft on people. I did, I heard a lot of people do witchcraft. I heard a lot of people uh, giving people miscarriages and washing the witchcraft because I, I, I knew pain, I knew I was in love. I knew that God didn't love me. I knew that my father didn't love me. So I was I was looking to love. And I think a lot of times you know, we, 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 we downplay love, but there's people that join uh, dating sites. And they join all these kind of things because they're looking for love. And I just want to introduce you today to the one that loves you beyond you can ever imagine. His name is Jesus Christ. And in 1999, I, 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 have, I make a joke out of this. In 1999, I remember uh, Jesus came to my house and he came looking for me. I left my body and I went to hell. And I was in hell. I don't know how long I was in hell. I was running to the portals of hell trying to find my way out. And the devil showed up in hell. And the devil said to me, I love you, John. I love you like a father. But you know the truth is the devil can't love you because you made him the image of God. 
and the devil hates you no matter what. And, and the devil is saying to me, when I was in hell, the devil was saying, you know, the funny thing is that when you walk in the portals of hell, when you walk in the grounds of hell, the ground breathes like a human being. It just breathes, you know. And there was a place that it, the fear in hell is so unpredictable. It wraps around you like if you were in a straight jacket. It's not the fear on the earth that when you're on the earth and you slip on ice or, or, or someone comes from behind the door and try to scare you, you just jump for a second and you're like, oh, you know. But the fear in hell is, 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 is it's sort of like a human person. It wraps around you and you're just, this desperation. The first thing when I ended up in hell, I said, I don't, I don't belong here, but I did belong there because of my actions, because of my decisions, because of the hate and the witchcraft and the, and, the, and the occult practices that I practiced. That was my life for 25 years. And when I left my body in October and then up in hell, the cross of Jesus Christ showed up in hell between me and the devil. And the devil went to grab me and the devil said, I have to destroy you. You leave me no choice. You're gonna leave me. You're gonna leave the occult. And you, I, I groomed you from the age of eight years old to be, to be my child and to take over the occult and destroy Christians you know, and destroy the church me. and destroy people. And you was my favorite it's instrument that I was using to destroy, to kill, still and destroy. And now that you're leaving, I have to kill you and I have to destroy you. So you will not go back into your body. And when he went to grab me, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared in hell. And he my enemy. the cross and he fell on the floor like a top I, There was no power in him to defeat the cross. And when I came back into my body, I came back no into my body and I felt like I was the nation. And I was like, this is how And I came back into my body and I gave my body. I am a child. It's been, it been an amazing journey. I'm no longer a slave. God took the broken pieces of my life and put it back in my life. I am a child. around the world touching people's lives and letting people know that you have a purpose, you have a destiny, you have a God that loves you beyond you can ever imagine. And it's not what you start in life. It's from my mother's womb. Look at my life. From a mess. You have mess. chosen me. And this doesn't mean I got it all together. I'm still fighting. Like, has called my name. Okay, if you let them keep the pain. I've been born you again. As he's right to now. a family. So it's happening. I know that God is real. And I can't say no. I'm no longer.